Greetings YouTube! My name is Tyler and this is the last vlog of October. So I have finished a book. Hold on, I just realized I need to go check my book revert bingo before I get into this. Give me a second. Okay, so that was <laughs> a waste of energy because I did not hit a bingo. I thought this book was supposed to hit one of my empty spots, but it did not. <laughs> so welcome to the vlog. I have finished a book. I am here to talk about it. I just finished reading On Fragile Waves by E. Lily Yu. Um, this is a very lyrical, poetic narrative about a Afghan family who is migrating to Australia and the difficulties they face on that journey both like in actually getting to Australia but also in like uh integrating into Australian society I suppose um and like just trying to stay in Australia um I gave this three and a half stars so it got rounded up to four on Goodreads um I didn't like dislike this but I really felt like I personally was missing the like more artistic um, overarching narrative that would have really made this book pop for me. And part of that I think was, I thought this was supposed to be a sci-fi book. Um, I swear that I had listened to um, pop culture happy hours, like sci-fi it must, it must have been sci-fi and fantasy. Um, th they do an episode on books and they'll like do different uh, like um, genres and they'll talk about their favorite books in like the last year. Um, and I, I know that's where I got this recommendation from. But I was expecting like some sort of really uh, fantastical element or twist and that's not what this book is. Um, I guess it would be kind of described as like magical realism maybe. Um, I have never really read any magical realism because it does not seem like something I would enjoy. Um, and this kind of has the hallmarks of things like I just don't like connect with or like enjoy reading. Like I didn't hate reading this or anything. It's just like not my type of story. Um, it's very dreamy. I don't know how else to put it besides dreamy. Catherine House was also kind of dreamy but not that was more like the atmosphere is dreamy um, and like you're floating while <laughs> like floating through the narrative where this is like there are actual like a, a dream element um, and you can't necessarily tell um, what is real or not. So I don't know there's like this like these dream parts that like I just could not get get into like that's just not my favorite thing to read I don't like, like reading dreams I don't like like conversing in dreams and things like that um and I just don't feel like the writing struck me in the way I was hoping for when I picked this up if that makes sense um so yeah it wasn't a miserable time or anything like that it just was not what I was expecting or hoping for if that makes sense. Um, so it is what it is. It must have been described as fantasy and I just misunderstood. Um, but even it like it was not super fantastical. Um, it felt very real and grounded in reality. Um, but there's just like this one element of fantasy I guess. Um, you know magicality. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't have much else to say about it. Um, I'll talk to you when I have something else to say about a different book. Howdy YouTube, long time no see. It is October 25th. So you saw me yesterday and you'll see me today. Um, I finished Nothing But Blackened Teeth. Uh, let me grab the book. So I finished Nothing But Blackened Teeth by Cassandra Kaw. Um, I picked this up on a whim, even though, uh, every person I had heard talk about it did not like it. 
um, and I didn't really like it either. Uh, <laughs> I ended up listening to this in audiobook form, mostly because every time I picked it up to try and read it, I kept zoning out. Um, so I put it on hold at the library and I waited a couple weeks for it and it checked out to me late last night. It was only three hours long, so I ended up listening to it in two chunks. I listened to roughly the first half uh, earlier in the day while I was doing some things. And then I listened to the second half while my husband was out lifting and I was untangling yarn while I did it. Um, I'm going to give it three stars. I didn't hate anything necessarily about it, but I just didn't care. <laughs> um, there were a few scenes that definitely got kind of a visceral gross out reaction from me, uh, which kind of keeps me from giving it like two and a half stars. Um, but overall, like I just didn't like the writing really. A lot of the like descriptive language and the metaphors used were just like, I don't know. I just like didn't like it. I didn't like the writing um that much like I didn't hate it but I just I don't know it just like was irritating enough to kind of grate me which ended up making it like harder for those like gross out scenes that I did like um it just ended up making it like oh that's an interesting thing that's like Ugh. uh but not like something that just blew me out of the water especially because like I just didn't care <laughs> about any of the characters or like what was going on. So it's like about a wedding party that's gonna have like a wedding at this haunted place in Japan. And like, I just, I didn't care. I did not care about any of these people. Um, and where was I going with that thought? I had another thing I wanted to say. Oh, and so there's this like, meta commentary that happens near the end like once shit really starts hitting the fan uh people will make comments about like oh and of course we're gonna have to do this because of course the house is haunted whatever you know whatever they're saying and i i hated the meta commentary i really did not <laughs> like it um so i don't know three stars i guess um it just really did not do a whole lot for me um and you know i say i hated the meta commentary but it wasn't like a visceral angry hatred it's just like i didn't like it <laughs> um it was probably the most irritating part of the book for me um but not in such a way that like i gave it one star um honestly i there was a point where i considered dnfing it um but once i checked the audiobook i was already like a third of the way through uh, so it just made more sense to me to like keep listening to it while I did other things um, and just finish it in a day and then I can get the physical book off my TBR shelf and donate it or whatever. Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, I'll see you when I have another book to talk about, I suppose. Bye! Hello, it is October 26th. This is the first time in a while I have had three check-ins in a row. Um, I just finished reading Dreaming of You, a novel in verse by Melissa Lozada Olive. Um, this is a very weird <laughs> uh, book. Um, it is told in verse. Uh, which was a little intimidating for me. I'm not a big poetry reader. Uh, it is, you know what, let me just read the summary because I feel like it will do a better job than I can do. Uh, a macabre novel in verse of loss, longing, and identity crisis following a poet who resurrects pop star Selena from the dead. Dreaming of You is an absurd yet heartfelt examination of celebrity worship. Um... Yeah, uh, I gotta say a lot of the stuff in here just like really, hello tire cat, can I finish? Um, there was just like a lot of lines that just really struck me. I did a lot of highlighting while reading this. Um, I will say like 
I'm not a huge Selena listener fan or anything like that, but I did grow up <laughs> watching the Selena movie with JLo <laughs> uh, in it. Um, and so I've always kind of had like a little soft spot for her, even if um, I never really like just sat down and listened to her music, um, just as like uh, a half Mexican girl growing up in the South. Like uh, there was something that I just really enjoyed about um, just the idea <laughs> of Selena. Uh, I didn't see a lot of Mexican people in the culture really uh, growing up. So um, yeah, anyways, I'm going off on a tangent. So yeah, I just I really enjoyed this. Uh, the author was on an episode of, can you guess, American Hysteria. Uh, and they were talking a little bit about the book and it just got me kind of intrigued. Um, and you know, strangely, it fit the Halloween vibe. I really enjoyed this uh, so much so that even though I'm only giving it four stars, there were points where I like immediately wanted to restart reading the book. Um, so I think I might end up buying a copy. And I liked it so much that I'm willing to try her book of poetry. Um, like I said, I'm not a huge poetry person. Uh, but this sh the way it was written just kind of clicked with me. Um, so I thought I would try her poetry at some point. So I would say this was a win for me, uh, especially because I heard about it like two days ago and I started it like a few hours after hearing about it. So um, it was a win for me. Um, I will talk to y'all later. Bye. I'm back for just a quick little addendum. Uh, I was just reading the reviews for Dreaming of You on, <laughs> on Goodreads um, and I'm really glad I did not read them before I picked up the book. <laughs> They are all like one star and two star reviews. Um, people did not like this. Um, I don't know what to say. Uh, take my review with a grain of salt, but it just really hit some sort of spot for me. The weirdness in it worked for me. Um, the, the, the meditating on celebrity, um, the, it's a lot more about Melissa than Selena, so I guess that might also probably have something to do with how people feel about this. Um, I don't know what to say. It just, it worked for me. It was four stars. I enjoyed it. Um, if I had more uh, understanding of poetry. Why are you so wet, Tiger Cat? <laughs> if I had more understanding of poetry as a genre, I think it probably could have been five stars because I feel like I could have grappled with stuff a little bit better um but overall I don't know I don't know what to tell you it worked for me okay I'm really going now <laughs> bye goodness gracious it's still the same day um I just re I was looking at my bingo board and I did some rearranging uh and I hit a bingo finally the last week of October and I have hit a bingo I have hit a bingo so I will tell you what the bingos were. So looking back, uh, this was like a backlist book and I did white is for witching for this because that was like published in 2009. I should have brought my phone with me because I could have looked at Goodreads, but we're going to do this on the fly. Uh, then the next one was outside the box. This one was supposed to be like a book about an experience uh, outside of yourself really so either like from I don't know a person of a different race than you someone who has experienced something different than you and it's about that that sort of thing so I did uh, On Fragile Waves by E. Lily uh, Yu and because that was about uh, a migrant family from Afghanistan to Australia so this is like an experience that's way different from my life experience. Uh, then page to screen. Uh, this is like a, a book that has been turned into a movie or a TV show. Uh, this would be The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls uh, because that was turned into a movie at some point. Uh, debut or something new. 
this was supposed to be like either a debut novel or something new to you. Um, I ended up doing Silk Hills for this because that was published this year, even though there was another square that's like new in 2022. Um, I decided to use that as also something published in 2022. I mean, it was new to me also, like, um, it was a new book to me. Uh, but yeah, so that was published in 2022. So I put it there. And then Best of Friends. This is supposed to be a book about a circle of friends. Um, this would be nothing but black and teeth because it is a group of friends that are trapped in a spooky house for a wedding ceremony. So yeah, that is that. I have one, two, three, three almost bingos. <laughs> They're kind of hard uh, ones to decide what book to put there because it's dark and messed up and I feel like I read a lot of dark and messed up stuff. So I'm like trying to hold off that spot for as long as possible um, for a book that maybe won't fit any of the other bingo spots because a lot of these books can fit multiple things and they can be rearranged in other things um in other configurations so I'm like, trying to hold that one open for as long as possible uh gifted or thrifted this one is a book that has been gifted to you or you have thrifted um I have some books that have been thrifted I just am not in the mood to read um so that one's just kind of difficult <laughs> for me and then Something Borrowed is, again, kind of in the same way that Dark and Messed Up. Uh, I read a lot of library books, so like half of these books could technically be Something Borrowed. So yeah, anyways, so that's my book Bookdrovert bingo update. I have finally hit a bingo. God bless. Um, yeah. All right, I will see y'all later, maybe probably tomorrow. <laughs> All right, bye. Greetings! It is October 28th and typically I would be closing out a vlog right about now. It's been a week. However, there's three more days left in the month and there's not a whole lot of point in doing a three-day vlog. <laughs> so I did finish a book today. So I finished When the Reckoning Comes by Latanya McQueen. Uh, four stars. Really enjoyed this quite a bit. Um, it didn't have quite the atmosphere I was expecting. Um, I was expecting it to have a little more spooky, creepy, um, like Southern Gothic vibes. Uh, I didn't quite get that. This is more of a like ghost history is terrifying type book. Uh, but I really, I really enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, I will say it was a little bit slow in getting into like the scary aspects of this place uh, but near the end it really does get uh, kind of wild. There is one scene in particular in the last I don't know like 30 or 40 pages that is just absolutely brutal. Um, there were a couple of scenes in here that like really kind of had, had me shook. I don't want to get into the details. I don't want to spoil anything, but um, this does pertain to slavery. A big chunk of it takes place on a plantation. So if you are sensitive to topics around like uh, human abuse, especially in the confines of like chattel slavery, um, <laughs> I really would not pick up this book. Uh, but I think if you had read the description and that was something you were sensitive to, I don't think you would be picking up this book anyways, but I did enjoy it. I'm gonna give it four stars. Um, I will say, I felt like the writing was maybe just a hair, I don't know, clumsy-ish for me. Uh, sometimes I found myself getting kind of lost in the writing and then like having to backtrack. Um, but overall I enjoyed it and it wasn't like something that really ruined the experience for me or anything. It just made it like not quite five stars for me. So great. That puts me at four books for the actual real week, which means I will probably read. There's at least one more book I'm going to finish in this vlog. So that's good for me. I did want to talk about, I picked up this book from Small Friend. Uh, records and books in Richmond, Virginia. And I also picked up this at the same time from Small Friend Record and Books in Richmond. 
and they were both wins. So 100% <laughs> success rate from small friend in Richmond. Uh, I really cannot stress like how much I really liked that, li <laughs> that library, that bookstore. Um, and if you were in the area, you really should check it out. The selection is just excellent. They have a whole section of like weird, dark, gothic horror uh, books um, where I picked up both of those, which was just like really awesome for me. Um, obviously, you can pick up duds of books at any bookstore, uh, but I just realized that when I finished When the Reckoning Comes that I had also picked up other terrors there and that was also a win. So I just wanted to give them a little shout out, uh, recommend popping in, especially if you tend to like uh, weird books like I do. <laughs> And then one last thing before I close out this clip for the day, I did get another bingo. With finishing uh, When the Reckoning Comes, I ended up marking off uh, Dark and Messed Up. So this top corner was When the Reckoning Comes here. Um, and so that finishes this bingo here. Uh, so I'll talk about what those books were and their topics. Uh, so school ties ended up being Catherine House because that was taking place in a school. Uh, New York State of Mind. This one was a little bit of a stretch, but I did Lost Children Archive because it starts off in New York um, and the people like the mother and the father are like from New York and there is a little bit of going back and forth especially in the beginning between the road trip and New York so it's not about New York and like honestly the vast majority of it does not take place in New York but it seemed like enough of a New Yorkiness that I used it for that uh true story so this was just supposed to be nonfiction. um so I did how to understand fascism is that what that by jason stanley how fascism works that is that's what it was called so i did that for the true story uh prompt and then something new in 2022 uh this i used the weight of blood because i pre-ordered it it came out in september of this year so that seemed like the perfect book for that prompt so that leaves um Still Gifted and Thrifted is almost done and Something Borrowed is almost done. I have an idea of something I will read for Gifted and Thrifted. I'm just not gonna get it to it this month. Um, so we'll see. Uh, I was kind of hoping I was gonna finish this whole board this month, uh, but I'm realizing how much of a uh, stretch that is. Um, <laughs> so that's not gonna happen. Uh, but I think what I will plan on doing is um using different colored uh, stickies for November and so then like I can complete some of these bingos but I might also have some double bingos um and I can reuse some of the uh categories so I think that is my plan so I, I don't know I'm gonna stop talking now I've been rambling for a very long time um I will see y'all I don't know maybe later tonight if I finish the book I'm working on if not tonight tomorrow morning um yeah that's it bye hi hello it is still october 28th and i told you you would probably see me again and you did <laughs> you are uh i just finished reading peluda by melissa lozada oliva um this is a collection of poetry that she published um I want to say before dreaming of you um, but it's like under 50 pages so I just decided to dive in and read it um, and I, I gave it three and a half stars I really liked the very last poem uh, and there were some others that like had little bits and pieces that kind of stuck out to me but it didn't quite hit me or grab my attention the way that Dreaming of You did and I think part of that is just like I'm not a poetry girl <laughs> like it's just not my thing I really struggle with poetry like like getting the point of the poem if it's not like very straightforward so while um I felt out of my depth in reading Dreaming of You uh, the very broad framework of it being a novel and there being s 
a little tiny bit of a plot going through all the poems was just enough um, of a structure for me to uh, cling to to allow me to enjoy the parts of it that I enjoyed um, and I, I struggle with poetry books uh, because they typically <laughs> like there is just a collection of poems um, and you know I think it's kind of similar to like my struggle with short stories too um, even though there's a, obviously more plot within a short story um, there's something about like jumping from different story to different story to different story um, that kind of just wears me down and it's similar in poetry where it's like a different poem a different poem a different poem and like I think in theory they're supposed to kind of there's supposed to be some sort of logic to the order that poems are in a book um, I just don't have that knowledge and it's not clear to me and it is like it ends up being a struggle for me um, anyway so like I didn't have a bad time with it um, it's just like not my thing uh, so I've actually finished five books this week uh, and so I'm hoping there will be one more that I will fit in in my extra three days of this vlog but I'm not sure because I am actually currently only reading one thing and I definitely won't finish that in three days um I started listening to the audiobook of The Dawn of Everything uh, I can't remember the authors right off the top of my head um I'm listening to the audiobook it's 24 hours long <laughs> so I'm not expecting to finish that uh soon anytime like very near future um but I'm enjoying it this is like a uh decolonized history of society sort of um we're just spending like I'm still like an, only two hours in and we're just talking about like the origins of inequality and how this concept has come into the western canon through native and indigenous uh, scholars and thinkers when Europeans made their way to America um, and it's really just trying to um, think differently about what we have been taught in school. So um, it's really interesting. It's just really long. <laughs> uh, so that's the only thing I'm currently working on. But I have a couple library books uh, that I will probably start one of tomorrow. I can't decide if I want to do the um, Tanana Reeve do book that I picked up the between I think and that's like kind of horror -y, and maybe I want to do that right before um Halloween and then I picked up two non-fiction books um I picked up like I can't remember exactly what it's called but it's like a history of bisexuality um, I picked that up and then I picked up something about abolishing the police um I I can't remember the name of that one either um so I don't know what I'm gonna dive into yet. We'll see how I'm feeling tomorrow. Um, I will talk to y'all later. Bye. Hello, it is October 30th and I'm just checking in because I just finished a short little book uh, called Rock Collector by Becca Tubin. Tobin. Um, this is was a short little comic. It was only like 32 pages uh, and it was about some aliens and their rock collection uh there <laughs> there was some funny bits i actually quite enjoyed this um i'm gonna give it four stars however it's not in the goodreads database yet so i had to go through that whole rigmarole role um so hopefully that will be added to the database sooner rather than later because otherwise i will forget to rate it um but i did read it uh so yep that's really all i have to say I should be seeing you tomorrow with my closing thoughts on this week and change of books. Um, I can't imagine I'm going to finish anything else. I'm still working on that very long audiobook. I ended up starting The Between yesterday and I'm making good progress on that, but I'm hoping some spooky stuff starts kicking in soon. Um, there's definitely like something weird, uh, but it's right now kind of just reading like a regular fiction book. Um, but it's good. I'm enjoying it. So we'll see where it goes. Uh, and I think that's it. Oh, I'm also reading the mixed up files of 
someone misses something. I don't know. It's a children's book from ages ago. Um, I'm just reading like a chapter at a time before bed uh, to get the thrifted thing on Book Trivert Bingo. Um, oh, and Rock Collector should get me Bingo too because I'm going to do that for uh, Borrowed. Um, something borrowed in that corner. So imagine that's marked off. Uh, so the other ones for that bingo were something new in 2022, which I already talked about. That was the weight of blood. Best of friends also already talked about. I used nothing but black and teeth for that. Um, isolated vibes. I used Pilgrim's Wilderness, which was nonfiction, but it was about that family that had, um, been isolated by their father in the Alaska woods. And then what is this one? Oh, this one was Scare Tactics or something along those lines. Uh, yeah, Scare Tactics, which was supposed to be either something scary or a type of book that scares you. Uh, so I used Dreaming of You, which was the book in verse. Uh, about Selena and I use it because poetry typically intimidates me so I don't pick it up very often um and then something borrowed will be rock collector so I managed to hit three bingos <laughs> in the very last week of October um so that's pretty solid all right I'll see you tomorrow bye hello it is November 4th and I'm editing this vlog just to realize I never closed out the video. I am in a very weird way uh, <laughs> because I've gotten a haircut between vlogs. So I'm trying to minimize the uh, difference between <laughs> me in the last video and me today. Uh, anyways, I did not close this vlog out. So I just popped on to say I finished six books in this week. My favorite, it's impossible. Five of the six books I read were uh, four stars, so there were a lot of good reads. Um, I think maybe Dreaming of You might have been my favorite, um, but they were all pretty good. And then Nothing But Black and Teeth, was that that vlog? This vlog uh, was my least favorite. Uh, so, yep, that's really all I have to say. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in to the last week of October. Um, I will see y'all next week with my November vlog. Bye.